Buddy, how's the pre-season been? Are you following kind of the same regime or are you doing anything differently this season? No, it's been pretty uh, pretty similar to last uh, pre-season. Um, we've obviously gone a bit more um, into depth with our game plan and sort of tried to enhance that a little bit more of what we did last year. Um, we're just coming to some match simulation and stuff now, which is always fun. It beats running around the oval uh, doing laps. So um, as you probably saw right there today, we're doing some full ground stuff and uh, it's a little bit more enjoyable than uh, yeah, doing the uh, straight line running. And who have the young boys been Yeah, there's been a, been a fair few. It's um, when I say we can get into full ground stuff, it's because of the guys that come back in such good nick. And, um, I know it's pretty cliche, but um, you see guys like Jake Saligo out there today, uh, you know, Sam Berry um, has somehow got stronger and bigger than he was last year. Um, so it'd be a nice sort of mix through the midfield and um, guys like Ford, it's good to see Riley Fields all back out there and um, even some of the old boys like uh, the Texans went all right. So uh, I'm sure it'd be happy for me to say that. Yeah, I was obviously really, well, I am really close with Paul and, um, you know, it's sort of, his decision that he's come to and the club's you know let him uh, take some time with it and um, obviously with how far set back he was he uh, he realized he probably wasn't able to actually make it out this year so uh, it's just it's disheartening for him and um, you know really disappointing and um, such a crucial player for us in 2021 and it's just uh, one of those things and we see it through the AFL nowadays and, and other sports as well it's such a serious injury and um, you know for his long-term health and, and safety I think it's a smart decision for him. What's you said to you about what he's going through at the moment? Oh, I sort of, um, I don't try and ask too much with it. Um, obviously want to understand what's going on, but um, I know that he's gone through extensive um, you know, procedures with some of the physios and the doctors, and he's trying a lot of different things. And um, I think for a while it was going up, and uh, as, it, as it happens with concussions, um, he goes up and down and ebbs and flows. And uh, I think it's just everyday life stuff as well. I think he you know, was trying to progress into some, uh, into some fitness and obviously went back. and. Um, at the moment, I think it's more just trying to find some consistency with feeling actually okay and, and trying to you know stem those ebbs and flows. So I know it's super frustrating for him, and I can't even imagine sort of what he's going through. And um, as I said sort of before, his long-term self and health and safety, I should say, and well-being is you know priority number one. Yeah, I think you'd find that most of the team has actually messaged him. I know the coaching staff has. Um, Adam Kelly sort of spoke to us the other day about it. Um, and it's more so just checking up on him. Um, you know, probably catch up with it at some point. But I know that um, with him and his, his family being from Melbourne, he's sort of been to and from and, and done some stuff over in Melbourne to try and help him. So um, just a matter of picking and choosing, you know, when to see him and, and when to contact him. I know he's, um, as I said, he's going through a fair bit. So uh, just support him to the best we can. But it probably wasn't a surprise, the news, given he missed all of last season. He tried to make a comeback to Sort of, even October, he had hopes of this season. But when it is announced to you guys, is there? A, how would you describe it? Is it a bit of a sinking feeling, knowing that you know finally the full stop's been put on on the ordeal for him? Yeah, I think it's more um, sort of care for Paul more than sort of the situation. You sort of think, oh, it's it's frustrating for him in the position to not be able to play football, but in the scheme of things as I sort of touched on it's it's long term health and um, you know he's just obviously just trying to start a family and um, you know we've, we've seen him come in and try um, you know throughout the year of actually trying to get going and progressing and um, you know if it is to actually happen and we've seen with some other players over the AFL that come back after you know some time away um, I think it's probably the next step for him and he's probably you know spoken to some of those players and obviously professionals in the field to sort of see the best way for him to come back um, and we support him as a group and as a you know a football club and as a whole. How serious does professional sport have to be with protocols for these Yeah it's probably uh, the topic, talking topic of you know sport not just in AFL but um, you know all around the world at the moment and it's a thing that's probably the hardest to measure you know you see these injuries that are you know a broken bone yes or no but this is um, you know, we've seen in the AFL we've had four or five different cases with guys, you know, retiring or missing extensive time and one, you know, subject A symptoms to subject B is completely different. So um, it's a matter of individual cases and, and what works for them and um, we've seen some players come back and uh, hopefully that's the case with Paul too. Do you think there is a possibility we've seen him play his last AFL football game? I think it's probably too hard to tell. Um, it's at the moment you'd probably say it's it's a long way off, which it which it is, is he's you know put on the uh, the inactive list. But um, as I've sort of touched on, there's a couple of guys that have done that and then come back and play you know really imp important roles for their teams or, or um, you know come back and resume their career. What do you make of Tyler Brown this morning? Yeah, it's great news. Great news. He uh, 
He's a big boy, big inside mid, um, you know, bigger than some of us in there, including myself. So um, he's fit in pretty seamlessly. He, uh, he seems to get along with the boys pretty well and, um, you know, slotted in after a couple of years at Collingwood. So a great addition for us and uh, he, look, he looks good. Did you know much about him before, Lenny? Uh, I played against him a couple of times, um, him and his brother. Um, but uh, it's sort of in and out for him. He wasn't actually able to train on the Monday because he um, couldn't get in contact with AFL and um, he uh, did some medicals, but it's actually good to see him out there today. So first couple of days, I think it's a bit of a whirlwind for anyone that comes into the club and uh, sort of gets to know him a bit more now. And uh, yeah, it's great news. What do you think? Does it feel like that? Is it just a bit of a position of needs? height and everything? Yeah, we're pretty, uh, pretty small. Um, you know, not saying small, but we don't have that, you know, Paddy Cripps type. And um, I think last year we actually handled it really well, though. You got your blokes like Sam Berry and um, you know Harry Schoenberg got that pace and X factor. And um, I think Tyler Brown played, you know, all different positions. He was saying in a meeting the other day, he played forward and back and wing and uh, a bit of inside mid. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what they're playing for us. And uh, yeah, it could slot into the midfield with us pretty nicely. What do you think he can offer the team, like? I think sort of as I touched on, a bit of versatility. Um, you know, he's a big. Big inside mid, um, but then at the same time he can play that half back and on the wing. And um, I think last year he sort of said he played up forward too. So uh, sort of a Mr. Fixer, kind of like Dawes, that sort of bigger size mid, which would, which would be great. Where you're at, you're at with sort of five weeks till the first practice games, and then that sort of say eight weeks till round one. You're doing game plan stuff today. Can you get a feel on where you guys think you're at? Yeah, I think um, you know a contest work was our, was our strength last year and I think um, as you sort of saw today there's a lot of tackling that we do and a, you know, that's sort of our one wood and then um, as you saw we did some foreground uh, ball movement stuff that we're just trying to work on and um, that polish to our game and a lot of forward line execution so uh, we're in a really good spot as I said we're in a really you know fit kind of spot um, that uh, enables us to play that match sim stuff at this time of year and really progress into the uh, into the matches in a couple of weeks time. Polish probably has played you a little bit not personally, the team wise, it's probably been the one issue you'd like to fix. How much does Isaac help and how are some of the other guys contributing to that? Yeah, I think it's um, you know, more reps for us this, this summer in uh, in that space. I see you see at the end there we're doing a lot of inside, you know, fifty connect. Um, we've got a lot of forwards that are um, you know, your lead up forwards, your, your Darcy Fogarty, you see how we did at the end of the year, we put a bit of emphasis into that and um, you know, Texans a bit of both, they can do um, you know, in the air and on the ground so um, that's probably our, our next step. Um, I think, you know, other than that though, we have to really play to our strength of, you know, the, the inside mid stuff and the contest stuff that we actually do really well. And uh, you could probably see some of that today out of training. You've got one less spot still available. Who are you hoping the club recruits? You know, another big body mid, perhaps, or... To be honest, I'd have absolutely no idea. I, <laughs> I know there's another spot now, and that's, you know, another thing with Cedo that, you know, he the person that he is he would have known that you know where he's at and it actually opens up a, another opportunity for us so uh, I'll leave that to the recruiting managers and the list managers because uh, if I gave you an answer it'd probably be well off the mark so <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Junior had a couple of nice little moments out there yep. today were you expecting him to go back into defence and how would you sort of assess his proceedings? Yeah, it's um, pretty noticeable. Um, he's finally strung some trainings together and um, you know, a lot of off-season we did as, as a group and there was sort of 10 to 12 guys training and, and uh, Junior was actually able to get some consistency with his body and his, especially his knees. You know, he had that really uh, serious knee injury and it's actually come back and um, I think he was sort of play that, he can play up through the midfield a little bit but you sort of see today when he comes off half back and what he can do with the ball and break the lines and um, you know him and Dawes and uh, Brody Smith that's kind of a, a nice little trio back there so I um, think it's with him though you can probably put him anywhere and he, he goes pretty well so now that he's fit and healthy it's good to see him actually put some um, consistency together. Look, that it's just caught the eye a little bit. Yeah. Back. Yep. Yep. About yeah, he had some obviously long-term um, sort of lingering issues through his legs and um, and through his groins, and he uh, the same sort of boat actually got some consistency in the off-season and sort of cleaned himself up a little bit. And um, the, it's just the consistency. And I found early on doing a pre-season is it sets your whole year up, and that's what uh, Luke's actually been able to do for probably the first time since he got here. So. You can just sort of see the X factor that he's got, um, you know, playing up through the mid and, and half forward. So uh, fingers crossed they stay healthy and they can actually get out in the park and, and play some good footy for us this year.